of Psalm 100. And you know, when I read that, um, I just, uh, when he makes the uh, the seat, sorry, the, um, the lifts the needy from the ash heap that they may sit with princes and the barren woman, a joyful mother of children, um, that just says abundance to me. If you think about um, a barren woman being told that you're physically unable to have children, that's what barren means. And yet she's a joyful mother of not a child, but children. Um, that's abundance. If you think about uh, the, need, the, the needy in a heap of ash, um, just surrounded by dust, and yet uh, they're seated with princes. Princes are in uh, uh, their uh, big castles and have so much affluence and luxury around them. That's complete abundance. So it's a real juxtaposition from where we start and where God can bring us to. Um, so Lord, I just thank you for that um, verse that you've laid, uh, well, I don't say laid on my heart, but just opened and found this morning. I pray that it has blessed everybody that has heard it. Um, Lord, you're able to just make a complete turnaround and a change in our lives. Um, and Lord, all to the glory of you. So thank you, Father, for being a great father. And I just pray the uh, same for each and every person on this platform, those that are on and those that are yet to come, that even if you're in a situation where you feel that there's a lack, to just trust and know and believe that God is able to bring uh, complete abundance uh, to restore uh, your situation and to prosper you. Amen. Amen. So I'm just going to have a look at what I have. So I'm Thank you, man. Thanks for sharing, darling. You're welcome. So I don't know if there's anything that anybody would like to um to share this morning. If not, then we would just um no, I just want this opportunity to just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this new day. I thank you already this morning, but I just uh I'm grateful that it's uh, it's Friday <laughs> after a busy week. Yeah, I'm grateful for a night that I kind of went to bed last night, but knowing whether I'd feel I'd be feeling a bit gravelly in my throat, and I thought, God, I just I want to wake up tomorrow and just feel so much better. And I can't say I feel um, my throat feels a thousand times better, but I feel stronger. I feel better. I feel rested. I feel replenished. Um, I feel ready for today. Um, I have um, expectation for today. And I just pray that everybody um, is feeling exactly that, feeling rested, uh, replenished, ready and expectant today. And um, we'll just come on the morning. I pray that, you know, the Lord is with us without going out and coming in, uh, that things, that, you know, our, our steps are ordered and that, Things will just fall divinely in line uh, that wherever we go today, uh, that we'll be shown favor and um, that any obstacle that we will overcome, um, there will be no challenge that will mean that we can't, um, I don't know, we feel uh, unable to keep going on. Uh, we can't press forward. Uh, we know that our, our strength comes from the Lord. So there's no situation or circumstance that will uh, leave us flummoxed or unable to feel that we can uh, move forward. And I am, um, oh, this brother there. Thank you, uh, Pastor Andrew, no worries. Uh, it just sent a message to say that because of the connection that he's dipping in on, on, on that. Yeah. No, um, yeah, so I uh, just, uh, yeah, just uh, grateful to God uh, for today, and I hope that, um, yeah, as we go on, we, uh, we are covered, we're covered this morning, as we are each and every day, so thank you, Lord, mm. Mm, thank you, Father.
Psalms 119, uh, my brother Keith has just put into the chat. I'm going to read that if, unless somebody else would like to read that. I said 118, but it's Psalms 18. Sorry, Keith, bear with me. Sorry. Do you want me to read it, Donna? I was just thumbing, thumbing up, I muted it so as, as I thumb through the pages. Yes, please. Oh, it's a long one. We can share it if you'd like. Yeah, you actually, can... um, Keith posted it. He actually shared the entire text. It is Psalm 18, 1 to 3. Okay, wonderful. I want to read the whole 18. No, no, no. Just read 1 to 3. That'd be great. Thank you, Zuri. So I'm just reading from what Keith uh, pasted. It says, I love you fervently and devo devotedly, O Lord my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my keen and firm strength, in whom I will trust and take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Amen. I think there's a song with that time, verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Oh, there you go. Shall I be saved from my enemies? The Lord reign it. Blessed be the Lord. May the Lord God, my salvation be exalted. Yeah. Pardon my voice. Well, thank you for reading that, Zoe, and for and for the song. <laughs> I don't know if I know that song. I probably have heard it, but I, yeah, as you were saying that, I, thought, I don't know the words. It's more African, most likely more African. Might not be quite. Um... That's all right. The the, um, the churches that I've predominantly gone to have been African. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, I know. I I know that song. It's written from the. It's written off the Psalms. Yes, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Oh, the Lord, uh, Lord reign it. Blessed be the rock, and may the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call on, it's like a call and answer song. Yeah, yeah, it's like Ziri, you sing it. Okay. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy, is worthy to, to be praised. Is to be praised. Then is, shall I, I be, be saved from the enemies. enemies. The Lord reign it. Blessed be the Lord. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reign it. Blessed be the Lord. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. I remember we used to sing that like the warrior songs. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Even your little chorus between the two of you. Yeah, Amen. So maybe smile, I got lifted. Amen. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Song and you well. know, yeah. as he was, as 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 he was talking here, when he said, "I, I think somewhere it said about lifting the eyes to the tower." Oh, uh, was uh, that part when it was in the Psalms when it was saying, "Um, in Psalms 18, uh, Martha." Yeah, what was he saying about yeah. lifting? The Lord is. My tower. The Lord, my, like the, Lord is, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and the one who rescues me. My God, my rock and strength, in whom I trust and take refuge. Um, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my stronghold. All right, stop. That that my high tower. Mm. That is that is very significant. Yeah. Mm. 
because uh, I, can, I can guess that in those times of David, yeah, mm. there weren't no story buildings like how we have now, yeah? Mm. But that tower was like a place where the watchman would be, like the watch, the tower will be a place where the watchman will go to watch over the city, yeah? So, because it would have been elevated over mm -hmm. the city yeah. so that they will be able to see, maybe it would be built on a mountain or a high place where mm -hmm. they could uh, stay and look out. Out, yeah, look out for the enemy or look out. And so they were able in that eye tower to signal, to sound the alarm, the ram's horn or whatever, to warn that there's an enemy, mm. yeah? So he was saying, the Lord is my high tower. He is the one that is watching over my life to mm -hmm. sound the alarm, to mm. let me know there's a perpetrator, there's an enemy, there is, you know, something coming mm. so that I will have time to take refuge in that place, that secret place of the Most High. Right? So it's like, sometimes when we read this, the, the scripture, if we read it with a now in a, a sort of like reading as it's a now book, we will sometimes mm -hmm. lose the, the really source of what it's actually saying. Mm. Because it's easy to say, oh, the Lord is the eye tower. I can go to so many, like, faces. I mean, uh, high buildings now. I look, and there's just so many high buildings. And part of this high building um, uh, structure is a form of saying, like, like we're there. We've got status, we've got power, we've got dominion. We've got the new modern high rises, uh, the yeah, new, the luxury uh, apartments here, yeah. And if mm -hmm. you remember, even the twin tower, the twin tower in America, the financial headquarters, it was struck in such a way that the two of them came down, mm. and that that was their high tower. Even if you think about a, apartments, yeah, um, you know, if you think about uh, luxury apartments, the yes. most expensive apartment is the one at the very top, which is usually like the uh, is like the penthouse suite or whatever. It's usually like really, um, it's the one that's, that covers the the whole. Uh, the other apartments will be smaller bits of 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 um of that whole building, but that apartment at the very top is the one yes. that covers the whole area, and it's usually yes. the biggest most expensive yes. and it looks out over everything everything it? you could go yeah. in there and you could see the whole of maybe the whole of the area yeah far down into property like the whole of proper uh, central london all the, the mm. major buildings so just to say that the lord is our eye tower okay. my god my god there's no ear of our life that is missing from his eyes. Yeah. He's taking care of us, you know. Our enemies have got no chance because the Lord is our eye power. Amen. Powerful. Amen. You know, when I've, when, I've, when I've read Psalms 118, and I haven't read, um, I usually kind of focus on these, these first few verses that we've just read, one to three. And I always think about the Lord being my rock and my fortress and who rescues me is my strength and all that and all those kinds of things but as you kind of read through I mean I don't know I, I've never I've kind of been the, the Lord is my rock and salvation so I've, I've used it at times where I felt that I needed to be uh, comforted just God mm. comfort me just be with me at this time but it, mm. what you're saying about the fact that um and it says it that you know it's um he's looking out for us he's protecting us from our enemies yeah. I've never really, um, yeah, I've never focused on that bit so much before. I've always just thought, 
it's about him comforting me, comforting me at times where I feel maybe a bit fragile. Lord, you're my rock, you're my strength. Um, mm. And yeah, he, you know, says it. He is here uh, more than just being our rock and our strength. He's making sure that we're protected, that our enemy, mm. yeah. That okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, um, thanks, Marcia, for yeah, you know, you, bringing Marcia. to you know, to a proper understanding, the strong, um, the tower issue. Mm. Yes, you know, these towers were built back in the days, like fortresses, you know, Absolutely. and then the really tower at the top. And it's also a secure place. You know, another Psalm says, the name of the Lord is is our strong tower. The yes. rest is run it into it. Yes. And, and that one I know, that song I know now. Yeah. Um, so I know that that's another um it's one of the um, verses I normally used to pray when mm. I act or when I feel oppressed. We run into his name and then mm. we are saved, you know. Yes. And that, that, that strong that high tower, uh, strong tower is like it's a mighty fortress. Mm. There's another song that uh our mighty fortress is our God. That's by I think Martin Luther. You see it in, yes, this, yeah. in the hymn book, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. you know, and I think uh, to encourage us as well, you know, this week we've been praying for one another, isn't it? Mm, so amen. And or feel um oppressed or feel um attacked or challenged. Well, we have the name of the Lord to run into. Mm. You know, amen. We are secure, amen. you know. And uh, Psalm 91 says that he that dwelleth in the secret place secret of the place. Heart, shall mm -hmm. abide under the shadows so if you're abiding under the shadows it's a, it's almost like you're running into him isn't it yes mm -hmm. you with yeah. the so we are both yeah. um, we are both um destruction so to speak we just must not you know give in to the enemy's antics which would be to most times it will kind of uh, make us feel depressed and distressed and then we get ourselves isolated and in isolating yeah. ourselves, we pull ourselves out of that secure place, you see, and then he Amen. can strike, you know, Amen. and then he can strike. But once we are in spirit, we are in fellowship, in his presence, you know, he can back all he wants outside, but he can never reach us, you know. Mm. And I just, just as I said that, I remember the other scripture that says that the devil, like a roaring lion, you know, um, is prowling, looking for whom to devour. Yeah. If you easily devour, then he, he will simply be out and about devouring, isn't it? But he's searching for you know, and um, so it is when we now move out of our secure place, our high tower, mm. then you know he made them be able, but that is not our portion anyway. We're yeah. also him. Yeah. Just um just quickly, um when Donna was saying um about the rock, right? The Lord is is my rock. Mm. That is also significant. The rock is a firm place, right? It's the rock. You, when you build on the rock or when you stand on the rock is a form of security. Mm. It's our life insurance. Mm. When you build on a normal ground or... Uh, uh, something that's not firm and solid, when there's a problem, you will sink into that. It, mm. The earth can just swallow you up, yeah? The circumstances can just swallow you up. But when you are built on a rock, you are mm -hmm. on a firm place. And if we, mm -hmm. even if we look on how they build uh, houses back home, um, in some of our um, um, Caribbean countries, mm. they will build up high. You will look, they will be, why are they building all the way up there? Because they got the rock, right? And they're building on top of the rock. They're not building on top of um, sand or just ordinary dirt. They're looking for a firm place to build their house. And that means you'll have to, sometimes you have to climb to get yeah. up into yeah. those houses. Yeah. But when the storm comes, the hurricane comes, those houses are the ones that stood still. Mm. Yeah? And the foundation is solid. Yeah. yeah. And we've seen many examples 
old houses that were built on just ordinary ground. And when there's a tsunami, there is a, 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 a torrential rain. You, you just see just everything just have a mudslide. Yeah, so the Lord is the rock in which we are built. You may be saying, on this rock I build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you so much, uh, and, uh, Zuri. Um, and, and I just want to add that Keith just put in the chat again, which is relevant. Matthew 7, uh, 24 to um, 27, like the wise man who built his place upon a rock. Yes. Again, it was solid and secure. Thank you, Keith. Amen. Thank you, Marcia. And thank you, Zuri. And good morning, everyone. I'm going to hand over to Pastor Grace. Good morning, Pastor Grace. Uh, good morning. I'm just listening and enjoying um, how we're just getting clarity about the, 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 the word and more understanding about the high tower and how, yes, they did build it very high and they were able to watch. You know, we have our watchmen. Marcel would know about this because, you know, when, the, when you're an intercessor, you're actually watching and looking out to see the enemy um, against the enemy attacks. So um, interesting about you saying about how we need to be built on the rock because Jesus said he's the rock. He said, upon this rock will I build my church. And it's, you know, it's not, it's not the same rock that he was talking about. He's talking about on the, the revelation of Christ. He's going to build it a solid, solid, solid um, kingdom upon the revelation of Christ. And that revelation, that church that's going to be built, it's going to be on the rock because it's not going to be um, blown over by any hurricane, any, it, nothing's going to come against it. Nothing's going to prevail against it. That's why it said not even the gates of hell will be able to prevail against it. So we know that our foundation is solid. Our foundation is firm. Our salvation is, is, this, is built on Christ. Christ is our salvation. And I, I, I just thank God for the reading of the word and uh, how God is just revealing to us that, you know, we can't build on the sand. We can't build on our, our, you know, our opinions. <laughs> you know, our opinions might sound good, but they're just our opinions. We have to build on the word. The word is the one that stands firm. The word is the one that stands secure. The word of God is what we build our, our, our the church upon. So I want to thank everybody for sharing that. That was so really edifying and encouraging. And I don't know if Keith's got a worship tune that he wants to um, play at this time. We we ask him to just uh, just just get that ready right now for us. Um, if he's on the platform, I don't know if he is. Um, Keith, are you are you there? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't know if he was if he were there. Okay. Yeah, so um, we thank God for this morning. Everybody excited about today? We are. We have a brand new day, and again, brand new mercies. Brand new mercies. What a beautiful song. That is such an appropriate song. I, I, I forwarded this to quite a few of my contacts yesterday because I was just so blessed by this song. And uh, it's just reminding us that we need to pray in every situation. You know, it says, if you're having a good day, pray. <laughs> if you're having a bad day, pray. <laughs> if you think you don't know what to say, pray. <laughs> If you don't know what to, if you don't know what you're doing, pray. It sounds so simple, but I do we do it? 
do we do it? This is this is a really good song because it's reminding us that you know we don't need to struggle on our own. We really do not need to. We just give thanks in all things, in every situation, whether it's good or bad, you know, happy or sad. You know, we just gonna praise him in every situation, knowing that God is we have communication, we have contact, we have fellowship, we have access. Can you imagine? We have access to the throne of grace when we pray. And that is where the miracles happen. When we come before the throne of grace and we're able to access his mercies, he said we can come boldly. That's my favorite scripture. Yeah, can come one of my favorite scriptures. That I can come boldly to the throne of grace. You know, sometimes we feel so insecure. And we say, God, you know, I, I've done this wrong and, you know, I've made this mistake. I've, I've tripped up and, you know, how could you ever love me again? How could you ever, how could you ever care for me again? How can you, God is saying, we ought to, once we acknowledge our mistake, we ought to ask him to forgive us immediately. Immediately, because the devil will bring condemnation on you. He will beat you up and say, ah, oh, you're no good. You call yourself a Christian. This is how you behave. This is, you need to just really immediately acknowledge God and say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. That's what David said. He was a man after God's or heart because he always asked God's forgiveness. He always acknowledged that he, he, he made a mistake. You know, we should not be so proud to say, well, the devil made me do it. Yeah, the devil made you do it. But what are you going to do? Are you going to stay in your sin? Are you going to wallow in your mess? Or are you going to just, uh, uh, are you going to let the devil beat you up over the head? What are you going to do? You're going to wallow in your mistakes, wallow in your depression. What are you going to do? Are you going to stay down? Or are you going to br brush yourself off? And when, you, when the, the Bible says a broken and a contrite heart, in other words, if you're truly repentant, if you're truly sorry, he said the broken and a contrite heart, he will not despise. In other words, he will not turn you away. He will not, he will not use it against you. All we have to do is say, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgive me. So we, once we ask forgiveness, now we're back in right relationship again. We're back in right fellowship again. And now we can come boldly. We don't have to be intimidated by coming into his presence. Now we can come boldly. No, you're not gonna come boldly if you're all sh sh shirking and hiding and in, in, your little, in your little hole. You're not coming boldly when you're like that. But once you release it to God and cast your cares on him, now you can come boldly again into his presence. Now you can say, Lord, I'm here, I'm back again. I'm being restored. And that's what God wants. He wants to bring us closer. He doesn't want us to stay back. He wants to bring us closer to him. And when we're closer to him, that's where we can access all the benefits and all the goodnesses and mercies and all the abundance. So we wanna pray. And but what we're gonna do, first of all, before we pray, we're gonna ask God's forgiveness. We're gonna ask God to forgive us because there's things that we have done that we even don't even know about. We have, we have sinned unknowingly. The sins that, of omission, sins of omission means that you, you, you do it and you're not even, at, you're not really realizing that, you know, that was really wrong thing to do. Because you, these are the, the different things that clot up our hearts and clot up our relationship because we, 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 our hearts has been clotted up, but we want to clear our hearts this morning. We want to clean up our hearts. We want to say, Lord, forgive us. Before we, come to, before we come to the throne of grace, we want to ask his forgiveness. Then now we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Come on. We can come boldly without, without any guilt or any shame, without any condemnation. So I want us to just unmute and just spend a little time just... I, I was coming before the God and just say, Lord, Lord, it search me, oh God, and see my heart. If there is anything in me that is not right, if there's any behavior, is anything that I've said, if there's any way that I've grieved the Holy Spirit, Father, forgive me and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Because Lord, you, you said 
we should we should um confess our sins to you and you will forgive us and you will for, you will remember them no more as we as we ask god's forgiveness he just he, he he does it and he forgets about it he said that's it it's done job done so we need to forgive us when we ask god to forgive us then we need to forgive ourselves we don't need to keep beating ourselves up we've already god has already made us whole has already made us back into relationship so we don't have to beat ourselves up anymore we don't have to let the devil attack us with condemnation because we are the Bible says again that you said nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. He loves us unconditionally, even with our mistakes. He loves us. He loves us unconditionally. He's not holding our sin against us. He's not saying, "Oh, a few years ago you did that," and you. Did. He's not. He's not remembering it. It's us humans that remember stuff and use it against people. That is not right. God said, "You remember our sins no more." So we need to just. Remember that when we ask for God for forgiveness, it's done. It really is done. It's that. It is that simple. So let's just unmute right now and spend some time to just pray to God, to just ask him to just cleanse us, forgive us, and just, just get bring us back into, into a right alignment. Yes, right alignment with him. So just unmute right now. We're just going to spend a few moments just to cleanse our heart, cleanse our, our minds, cleanse that cleanse whatever the enemy might have attacked us with any oppression any any struggle any bombardment of the enemy we just want to break any any outside source that we'll be free 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 to worship free to give him praise free to lift our hands you know we want to be free so let's spend that time and just just in the presence of god right now thank you so lord we just Thank you right now, Father God. Father God, that um, anything that we've done wrong, Father God, anything, any mistakes that we've made, Father God, that is not law, God, wasn't right, Father God. I'll ask you now, Father, to forgive us, Father, of all our sins, Lord. Forgive us of all our unrighteousness, Father God. We come before your throne, Lord God, because you said if we ask your forgiveness, Father, you will not despise us. You will not turn us away. So, Father, we come before your presence right now father god and ask you to cleanse our hearts right now cleanse our minds right now father cleanse our thoughts right now father father any any oppression any 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 attack of the enemy that's bombarding us any outside oppression every, anything that is seeking to come on us father and to ca cause us to trip up cause us to be um cause us struggle and heartache father we come against that spirit we come against the spirits and the principalities of this of this world we come against the powers of darkness father the enemy is seeking to whom he can destroy but Thank father you. god we come against any plan of the enemy right now that is seeking to destroy anybody on this platform father god we pray lord god that you continue to cover us as we've asked you to cleanse us and to wash us and to make us whole right now father god Come back in the right relationship. Father God, that we'll come back in the right fellowship. Oh, which you're Father, cleanse us and wash us right now, God. Deliver us from the power, powers of the enemy, Father. Have mercy upon us, oh God, according to the multitude of your righteousness, Father. Father, have mercy upon us, oh God. Lock out every inner enemy that is trying to hold us back, Father. Lock out every enemy that is trying to hold us back, Father. Father God, anything in our hearts, Lord, that is clogging up our hearts, clogging up our, our relationship, causing us to stumble, causing us to, Father, every spirit of oppression, Lord God, we pray, Heavenly Father, that Lord Jesus, you wash us now, wash us, hallelujah, wash us, Father, that we be white and strong, Father God, we pray right now that, Lord, you can to wash every single one of us, Father, that we can come boldly to the Father, we pray, that, Father, we can come before your presence, and he went into the temple, that we will not be intimidated, we will not be beaten up, Father, we will not walk in condemnation, but Father God, that we will walk in right standing, right standing in right fellowship with you, God. Oh, Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, that Lord, you are a good, good Father, you will not despise us. Oh, Father, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you wash us, wash us now, that we will be clean. Father, cleanse my mind right now, cleanse my mind, Father, cleanse my heart, cleanse my heart, heart. Father, no, Lord, we surrender to you, Father. Our hearts, us, our hearts be clear, Father. Cleanse my, my characteristics. Cleanse my access to you, Father. I can come only to your throne. 
I got the call it to Saint Paul who will walk themselves to Father, your throne of mercy, Lord Jesus. You we make it that we can come with you, Lord. And when we, we can make our own decisions, Lord God. Position we can worship our faith, Lord God. We can be free from our foundation. We can be free from hurt. We can place ourselves on rock. We cannot be shaken. We cannot be shaken. We cannot be shaken. We cannot be shaken. We cannot be placed in the miry clay. We cannot be out of the miry clay. We cannot be shaken. Father, let us be free. Every stumbling let block, every hurt, anything that is broken in our hearts, and work Father, that we'll get back in right alignment with you. With a clean we'll get back in right fellowship with you, Father God. Father God, 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 you said that you've got such a sin perspective. Father, you're clean faithful and just to forgive us. Let's be able to see that. Father, knowing. we confess that we are free of. Know that we want to be holy, Father. We want to be in right relationship. We want to be upright. We want to listen. We want to be obedient. And you can enable us to be free worship. And we will not be rid of ourselves because the truth shall set us free. Take Lord, away pride, Father. Take away you know, anything know, that, Lord Jesus, don't know. Of every tried to rise. It's not living in sin. All the things that you try to stand in the very midst of our being. I try to in that the Lord says to cleanse away, cut away all the roots that you did not have. Deliver us. Have mercy, O God. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, Father. And breaking us. I pray, Lord God, that you will show your mighty hand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So that we will be coming to you in whatever state we may feel. In the name of Jesus. We come up and go to the front of grace and where we can access and clear us grace and mercy. And find grace to help in that time of need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will not Father, be Father, our hearts and we will lay down our hearts and bend our knees. Shouldn't. Bend our knees before you, Jesus. Things that Father God, before you, Father God, before you, Father God, before you, Father God, we will Lord, not I worship any other God, Father. Father. We will make you a space in our heart and a space in our life. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Lord, I commit this platform to you. I commit every single person that I've come on here, Father God. That their hearts will be cleansed. Their hearts will be washed. Father God, I pray that they will be walking in condemnation. That they will be walking in condemnation. Father God, I pray that they will be walking in condemnation. 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 That that, oh God, we help us to examine our ways as a man of heaven. That you Father, give us the mind of Christ. Christ. You will say we never know. Father, help us to have the mind of Christ. Help us to be your, your followers. Help us to be believers. Things that believers we are, are not doubters. Hallelujah. Of you, that Father, we do glory this morning. And we can come that mountain. That we do speak to that mountain. Speak to that evil name of Jesus. Through faith. In the name of Jesus. Let us be able to walk. Let us be able to walk. Lord, your word also says to Glory to God. Glory to your name. We have been crippled in our position. Oh, hallelujah. Let us be able to walk in such a means. Let us just get up and walk, walk away. Walk into a new position, into a new realization, into a new understanding. Let us be able to walk. Let us be able to freely. We have right relationship. You dance, Lord God. And imagine the beauty that it will be. The weight is taken off. Remove that weight that holds us down for too long. Let us hold down and pull away the tethers. Snap the tethers. I pray, God, that we will be strong before you and strong against the enemy, the enemy that tries to penetrate our flesh, our mind, our spirit, our atmosphere. I pray, Lord God, every person that comes on this platform oh, today they can shed the weight, whether it's a troubled boss, whether it's a troubled colleague, whether it's on the bus journey, somebody may have talked to them and engaged with them in such ways. Cleanse us of our thoughts, oh God. Cleanse us of our mentalities, oh God. Cleanse away of everything that is not of you, that is not pure or clean. Let us not realize this, even anger, something so simple, something simple as anger, someone cutting us off across the road, but yet we're still saved by you. Be, yet we resort to anger instead of thank Thank you, Lord. Cleanse us completely, God. Let us repent of all circumstances and situations, no matter how big or small. Let us be clear, clear. Let us not be tripping over ourselves, over the attributes that we have laid before ourselves, that we have put up as a mountain that will be a viewpoint way further than you. So we focus on the mountain, and not the one who can remove it. I pray, God, that you will make your way, make it feasible, make it possible. Let us shed that weight today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A broken and a contrite heart. He will not despise. He will not turn you away. 
If you confess your sins before him, he will is faithful and he's just to forgive you of all your unrighteousness. And I thank God that we can, before we start asking the Lord, oh, I'll give him a long shopping list of what the stuff that we want, we make sure that we're in right standing, we're in right relationship, that you know our heart is in the right place. Uh, uh, we God will give us the desires of our heart, but if our heart is full of envy, if our heart is full of strife, Oh, Pastor Grace is frozen. Pastor Grace, we can't hear you. You're unmuted, Pastor, but no one can hear. Keith, can you send her a text, please? Yeah. Thank you. Heavenly Thank Father, you. just pray over the atmosphere and no more issues of their internet, no more issues of their devices. Mm. No more kicking off. <laughs> No more circumstances that will go before them that are stopping the message mm -hmm. and the word. The enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy, and we will not allow it or accept it. Mm -hmm. I pray, oh God, that you will make a way that mm -hmm. they will no longer be troubled by situation or circumstance. I pray, God, that you will make a feasible, possible. You are the only one who can make it possible. We buy technology, trusting in it and relying on it. But Lord, we trust in you to cleanse and clear and purify all that we are using in your name. So that when we use it in your name, it will be possible for it to just function like it's supposed to, like it's intended. Clear away all. We just prayed about it, oh Lord. Clear away all that is not of you. Clear away all the deceptions that the enemy is trying to, to create, that he's trying to use. In fact, he's using. We cleanse this platform of all that the enemy is trying to infiltrate. We break it, nullify it. We kill it. We slice it. We sever it so that it will not return. Let the enemy be fearful of our position that when he comes on here, he will not be able to win or take roots or take hold. He will not be strong in his, his so-called position. We kick him off the platform. We kick him off people's devices, means and possibilities. That is our God. You are the God of the impossible. I pray, Lord, that you will make it possible, that we will make it feasible. You will make it so that what we can't see or can't perceive, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against all the spiritual principalities of the air, the sea, the land, even the internet, even a computer, even a device that's used to, for the fervence of God. We present everything to you, God, and utilize your power, not ours, not our means, not confusion, because you are not a God of confusion. Make a way, oh God, exponentially, unexplainably, immeasurably. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello. Thank you, Keith. Can you hear me now? Yes, can hear you. Um, <laughs> I was just encouraging everybody in the Lord, and I just was just excited about the how God has cleansed our hearts. And, you know, I, I was saying... Hello? Can you hear me still? Yeah. Bear with me one moment.
Can I can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, oh fantastic. Okay. Um, yeah, we're having a little little challenge here, a little technical issue, but you know what? To God be the glory, I've got my my backup device at hand. <laughs> well, that's, what, <clears throat> that's what we need. We need, we need to that. Don't let the enemy catch us off guard. You know, anytime he tries his little trick, we don't worry, we've got our backup plan ready. <laughs> so I've got my other little device ready just in case um, my, uh, my internet goes. So yeah, what I was saying is that before we come before the Lord, we confess our faults, confess our sins, confess our shortcoming. Ask God to cleanse our hearts. Because I was saying to you is that our hearts is where, is like the seat, it's where all our emotions, where all our, the heart is, can be very, very soft or it can be hardened, depending on what soil it is. We want our hearts to be um, solid. We want our hearts to be firm. We want our hearts to be pliable. We want when the word goes forth and we want our hearts to be flexible, that when the seed of the word go in, it can take root. And what I'm saying is that oftentimes our hearts are hardened because we've got lots of things in our hearts that we're carrying. And it could be strife. It could be bitterness. It could be unforgiveness. These are the things that block us up, harden our hearts. You know, can you imagine? You're, you, you've got something against somebody and you're carrying that and you've carried it for years. So now that thing has taken root. You know, before you just say, look, I forgive you, forgive me. And it's done and dusted. You nip it in the bud immediately because once it goes in and it takes root, it's, it becomes like a fortress in there. So it becomes more difficult for, for you to, to, to get that out because, you know, now it's been there for such a long and it's harboring all other, other, other um, spirits are coming on it, like bitterness, envy, jealousy, strife, all these things are, 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 it, it brings with it, with, it, with it. So we have to daily, hourly, minutely ask God to cleanse our hearts cleanse our hearts oh god fill me with your spirit take away the things that bring me far from you and help me to listen and help me to obey this should be our our prayer that lord don't let me just not hear your word and just say yeah 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 but help me lord that lord it will be like instruction it will be like it will be like food to my spirit nourishment to my spirit that lord something that will propel me into my future propel me into my destiny and propel you into your purposes because he has a purpose and he's got a plan each of us have got an assignment on our life and we have to fulfill our son assignment but I, sometimes we don't even know what that assignment is but as we as we walk with the Lord and as God speaks to us and as we obey and as we as we as we listen and as we respond and in obedience and then we see, oh, my gosh, the blessings of the Lord just beginning to open up to you and the God just makes it plain. You know, we have to be faithful in the small things and he will make us ruler over much. But God is God is seeing whether we're going to be faithful with the first instruction he can't give us the second instruction until we we done the first instruction so let us be let us be more diligent in our walk and don't take it casual don't take it lightly know that you know more and more i'm realizing god all these years i've, I've tried to do it on my own and i tried to do it in my own strength but i, I know you was there but i blocked you out you know i didn't really i didn't really acknowledge you he god was just like a little light switch i switch him on when i'm ready and i'll switch him off god is, doesn't want to be like that he wants to be in our daily walk hourly minutely secondly he wants to be involved and so i just thank god that we've come we can now come boldly to the throne of grace and we can know that there's blessings there there's, mercies there, there's goodness there 
uh, that we can obtain. I'm so blessed that um, this whole week, the Holy Spirit has orchestrated everything that has been said on this platform. I didn't come with no agenda. I didn't come with no plan. The Holy Spirit has orchestrated everything from start to finish. And the, the theme of this week is to pray one for another. Yeah, we are often praying for ourselves, but, and, you know, we are often petitioning God on our behalf, but we're not going to look beyond ourselves. We're going to look to the needs of others. We're going to remember our brothers and sisters in this specific week where we're concentrating on, on each other. We're going to lift up God. Um, um, we're going to lift up each other to, to the throne of God. And uh, that's what we've been doing all week. Everybody, Heather came on and she followed in that same flow. And, and uh, everybody has been assigned a person that they should have been praying for during the week. Everybody has been... Um, has um, given their prayer requests for so we know on what specific thing to pray about. It's good to be specific because sometimes we just pray all, all around the houses, but God says no, like that dart player, he will aim for that bullseye. So we're aiming for the bullseye. We're hitting it head on. We're just gonna we're, we're just gonna be on point and just hit hit the target because that's what it is, is to be specific. Specific prayer is pray direct to the needs so yesterday we had um we we we, we had people coming on the platform and that were praying for the person that they were assigned to and um we, we had such a powerful powerful time such a real prophetic time such a it was so it's so good there's such a blessing let me tell you there's so so much blessing when we're reaching out to others as we reach out to others, God is already sorting our, our problem out. He's already sorting our problems out because we're reaching out to others. And that's what Jesus said when he was here. He said, we ought to pray one for another. He prayed for us when he, before he left. He said, Lord, one of his greatest prayer before he left was in St. John chapter 17. He said, he said, Lord, I'm praying. This is a prayer. He said, I'm praying that the same glory that you give to me, this is what Jesus this is what Jesus said, the same glory that you gave to me, I'm going to give it to them. Imagine, God is asking for the same anointing, the same grace, Hallelujah. the same power, the same authority that he has. He says, I'm praying that you may give it to them. He said he, he's not only going to give it to um, the, the church, but he said he's, he's also praying for those that don't know him yet. He's still praying for those, the unbelievers, that they will come to the knowledge. They will come to the knowledge of him. He's praying this prayer before he left. And one of the greatest things in his prayer, again, he, what he said, he said, Lord, I'm praying as, as me and you are one. He said, me, me and my father, they are, we are one. We are one. He's praying that the church may be as one. Hallelujah. He's praying that we may be as one. That means we should not be fragmented. We should not be diverse. Um, we should not be scattered. We should be in one. We, we are the body of Christ. Can you imagine people that say, oh, oh, one leg over there, one foot over there, one head over there. That is a disjointed body. That is a disjointed body. He prayed that we may be one, no matter where we are. You know, sometimes I travel and I go abroad and I, I, I meet, I, I, I look for a church to go to while I'm on, on holiday. Oh yeah, because I'm on holiday, I don't go to church. I look for a church I can fellowship with at, no matter what country I'm in. And then when, when, I, when I meet them, it's like, you're my brother, you're my sister. I've just, I have never met them before in my life. But we are one, we are one. We are, you're my brother. You're my Hallelujah. sister. Hallelujah. Any, and anybody that you meet that's part of the body of Christ, they are your family. Come they on. are your family members. You are one with them, one heart. Even if you haven't met them for, for the one second, you're, you're, you are one. We are one heart, one mind, one spirit. Jesus prayed that we will be one, that we have the unity of the spirit. That means we stand for Christ. 
we stand for Christ, doesn't matter what nationality you are, doesn't matter what background you're from, doesn't matter what your culture is, we are one in Christ. We're one because we are the body, the body of Christ. We don't want to be disjointed or, or, or we want to be in one accord. My body doesn't say, oh, I'm going to go over there. My head goes over there. We are working in unison. We, you know, there's a, there's a connection. There's a coordination. My, my, my brain sends message to my hands to pick up things. And my, my hand goes and picks up things. And then the hand says, oh, now you need to feed yourself. So the, the brain sends a message to my hand to get my spoon to put into my mouth. Oh, my brain, my, my muscles, my muscles are working in unison. My, my joints are my, my picking up and all oh, that. Come on, come on. Unison. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is my, 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 my muscles, even my veins in my hands. They're working in unison. They're pumping. The, the arteries are pumping. The lungs are pumping. The, um, the, the, my lungs are breathing. Everything's working in unison. Come on. This is a body of Christ. My my liver doesn't say to me, "Oh, yeah, you're 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 always doing the talking. Um, no one sees me. I'm always in the background." My liver doesn't try to outshine me, outshine my face, because the liver knows he's got a purpose. The liver knows that he's got a function. My heart knows. My heart is not in competition with my with with with, with, with my arteries. They're not in competition because everybody is, has a designated part in the body that they belong to. I want you to get the revelation of this. My, there is no competition. There's no competition. Don't look at your brother and say, oh, I wish I could sing. I wish I could preach like him. I wish I could pray with him. No, you do what you're called to do. You complete your function. You complete your assignment. That's what God called you to do. Your mouth can't do what your feet does. My feet's not gonna say, oh, that's not fair. You, are you do all the talking. My feet was made to walk. That's what my feet was made to do. We have to do what we were made to do. I don't even know why I'm speaking like this. The Holy Spirit is just- uh... Come on, come on. <laughs> I, I said, I don't even know why I'm speaking like this. The Holy Spirit is prompting me to say this. I don't even know why I'm saying this, but we need to get it. We really need to get it. We, we are not in competition with not one another. Come on. We are not in competition. Amen. We have our designated function in the body. And we, can you imagine if my, if my, uh, if my, um, my, my lungs pack up? Because it says, oh, it's not fair. It's not fair. I can't, um, I can't eat like you. It's not fair. That's what we do in the body of Christ. We look at each other and we say, no, it's not fair. It is God assigned us to for a specific function in the body. And if my lungs said, oh, that's the, um, that's the, I'm, I'm not going to breathe anymore. Can you imagine what's going to happen to your body? Yeah, you, you're not going to breathe anymore. That means you haven't got the, the breath in your lungs. Come on, Rachel, that was your song yesterday. The breath. <laughs> breath in my lungs can you imagine he gives breath in my lungs so if my lungs said no 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 i've had enough now i'm just gonna pack it i'm just gonna pack this i'm gonna i'm just gonna not be part of the body anymore and you say no i'm gonna keep i'm gonna stay at home i'm gonna hide under the blanket i'm gonna draw my curtains and i'm not gonna be functioning anymore what will happen to the body we need the lungs we need every part of every part of the body so that means everybody is important everybody is in one i don't know why i'm talking like this but to god be the glory god wants someone to get the revelation of their function he gives us um the unction to function <laughs> hallelujah somebody's been praying for me somebody has been praying for me this week because hallelujah. i can feel the fire of god come on on me <laughs> and I'm not usually like this, but the fire of God is coming on me. And I thank God, whoever's been standing in the gap for me, me. Um, I can testify that Amen. the glory of God is, uh, is, is on me right now. <laughs> because I didn't plan any of this to say. Honestly, this is just flowing from the Holy Spirit. Amen. All I'm saying to you, listen, we're going to continue where we left off yesterday. Because there was, um, we prayed, we prayed for, um, 
we said that we're going to give it a week to, to for these miracles to manifest and we're expecting testimonies we are expecting breakthroughs we are expecting god to deliver and we're not we're saying lord now we want a now we want a now we want an immediate prayer answer to prayer so i just want us to continue where we left off yesterday yesterday we 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 knew the we asked everybody that you know the person that you're assigned to, to pray for. You have been given somebody to pray for. And I want you to, to just unmute and to just flow. Because I can't see everybody on, on, my, on my phone, but I will continue. Just put your hand up. Or just, if you know the person that you prayed for, you was assigned to pray for, I want you to pray for them corporately now on this platform. Because we're going to continue. Those, those that didn't get a chance yesterday, we're just going to uh, complete this assignment, because it is an assignment. God wants us to pray one for another. And because um, they said iron sharpen iron, come on, iron sharpen iron. That means that the, you know, we are there for our brother to help lift them up and to encourage them and to help them, Father, to help them to um, not feel down and to help them to fulfill their purpose. A lot of people have asked for purpose to be fulfilled. And that is very important prayer because we want everybody to be fulfilled, fulfilled in their assignment. Um, so um, I'm going to ask, um, I can see Keith's hands up. Keith, yeah. would you like to come mute? Um, yeah. Yes, so as a illustration of another illustration of what you were saying, if you look at Adam and Eve back in the Bible, what were they assigned for? You think just to pick fruits, just to eat fruits? They were there to sent there to do work. And what's the number one piece of work that you ever have to do in the garden? You have to cut away the weeds, cut away the, the overgrowth. You have to cut away the extras that when you look at a pretty garden, look at Chelsea's uh, flower show, they have to keep working, keep working. The weeds are constant. That's how the enemy works. So when you realize that when you pray, you're helping somebody else weed their garden and purify their garden. So you're encouraging them and their garden to make sure that it's furnished through prayer. I know that with my dad, he helps me rake my garden. I can, I can lawn mow it, but I don't have the strength. I've got atrophy in my arms and legs. I don't have the strength. I'll start, and I'm not joking. I will lie in the mess <laughs> that I've, I've created so that I, I can at least rest a bit. And when my dad comes over, he's like, Keith, this takes like five, 10 minutes for you, but he has to help me. This is how we're, we're praying together to help, to till the garden, to, to lay land the garden. See, a farmer can do things on his own, but how long would that take if you're continuously praying for yourself? But if you enable and, and employ, that's what we're doing through prayer. And we're employing ourselves to help somebody else because that's what an employer play, uh, does for the employees. They help them perceive the work. Sadly, in our day and age, Managers get a, 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 a complex and they, oh, you, you must, you must, and they get to ordering, but don't recognize that they're people who work under them. They once were. So now let's get to a position where we can pray for one another. It shouldn't even be a guess because God will drop dropping people in, stop, I mean, keep dropping people in your spirit. And if you're being disobedient to that, will God answer your prayers? Will your garden overflow? Will he allow it to overflow because you're not focused on everything else? It says in the Bible in Matthew 6, 33, we say it a lot on this platform. Focus on the kingdom. The kingdom is not us. If your brother is tripping and falling, it, it's not us. If you're standing there and witnessing, will you be a witness or will you aid? When I fell down backwards down the stairs, <laughs> nobody helped me. I had to ask God, God, what happened? I don't even remember. There was a landing in between the stairs and I don't remember hitting it, but I flew straight back onto my shoulder blades, but nobody was there to lift me up, even check I'm all right. I thank God that my bag flew higher than basically on my shoulders, where the sleeves, where the, the slings are. And that's what saved my neck. That's God. That's what saved my head. That's God. And I thank every person that prays for me, whether known or unknown, your prayers are valiant. Your prayers are necessary. This is how we cover one another. I like to say, people say a hedge of protection. I like a force field. I like the sci-fi movies of old, like Star Trek. And it's impenetrable. Nothing can get through it. They can fire their missiles, but they bounce off. 
That's what our prayer can do. So help each other to till their garden, cleanse their garden, because Adam needed Eve and Eve needed Adam. That was a central integral relationship. That was the first relationship that God approved of, approved of. So us as brothers and sisters, we can follow the mandate that Jesus set before us to enable us to watch out for our brethren, be witness of our brethren. So that in witnessing, it's not you saying, oh, well, well, bro, you're doing something wrong. Sis, you're doing something wrong. Because what happens first? You defend yourself. You put the wall up. But when you witness, first pray. First intercede with prayer. Let the Holy Spirit, who's governing you, to tell you that something is wrong, speak before you speak. Because if you realize that Moses was so fearful to speak into Pharaoh, if he just come up and say, you look, look, look these are my people. You're offending me and my people. Pharaoh would be like, who are you? The wall was up, the wall of protection. God had to harden his heart. So Moses had to find cruel and unusual ways to change his mind, even by doing all the atrocities that happened to the Egyptians. But if we can intercede and pray, we can enable a walking, a freedom, and it's better that two that walk together come in unity. Unity. Trust me, there's some times when I, instead of somebody saying something to me, they just, bro, can I pray for you? And when they pray, those words, because you're sitting in silence. Again, I'll show you the analogy when my mom and dad used to argue when they were, when, when I was a, a young kid. And then my brothers and they were trying to stop the arguing, stop the arguing. They're doing everything in their means. I remember my brother getting flung backwards by my dad and he landed on the sofa. And I thought, what else can I do? I'm the smallest. What am I going to do? And I sat in between them both and just, Lord, Please, Lord, I don't know, but you know. And as soon as I started to pray, the atmosphere changed. And then they sat down. You can still see the cutting eyes and the anger, but still the atmosphere changed. That's how I helped my parents. That's how I processed through God. God came first. I didn't know what else to do. I saw my brother fly back. He took air. He took flight. Forget Michael Jordan. He was doing that backwards. But the simple fact was I sat between those who were arguing in the midst. You can do this at your work. If people are fighting, just pray. It doesn't matter whether they believe or not. Because we hear you. People always hear a prayer. It's a crazy. Sitting on a bus, another example. When these kids were just warring and throwing stuff, throwing chips at people who pay to get on, but they get on for free. I just prayed, Lord, they don't know what they're doing. The disrespect. And they calmed down. They sat down. And when I opened my eyes, it was a prayer answered. Even the woman in front of me with a chip with ketchup on it that hit her. She said, I don't know what you said in prayer. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't hear me. It's not necessary for her to hear me. But she said, I don't know what you did in prayer. It changed the atmosphere. That's what we do. We change the atmosphere. When we walk in like Peter, we heal the land. We heal the area that people were lining up at the side to get healed just by the presence. Imagine what we would do. It would be faster than a smile on your face. You walk into a room and everybody's just seeing the presence of God through you because you walked in. Imagine that. There's a couple of books that I was quoted to a while back about how living people, human people who did the most amazing things. Like one guy went into a hospital and literally the people in the A&E department were healed and walked out praising God, praising God. Imagine that. So we are capable. If we do this, it's, a, it's actually, if you think about it, it's a remedial task because we know that you have your own garden to, to till. But know this, if everybody prays for somebody, your prayers will be covered. If everybody's like love, if you show love, forget about receiving it. If everybody showed love, you'll get love. If everybody showed respect, you'll get love. It's not, oh, first you show respect to get it. No, just show respect and it will come back to you. Even if they don't, keep showing it. And then eventually it will happen because, wait a minute, um, yeah, I'm doing something wrong. It's called self-conviction. That's what our prayers can do. We can self-convict ourselves from situations by trusting in people. That's why it's so important to share. Be open, be honest. It's not embarrassment because you want it over with. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Keith. Thank you so much. There was so much that nuggets that you shared there. 
Um, the one that I love the most is the one about the garden. You know, whatever, whatever we, um, can you imagine, whatever you plant, if you plant oranges, you're going to get oranges. If you plant apples, you're going to get apples. If that seed is sown in our hearts, if the word is sown in our heart, that's what will grow. The word will grow inside of us. And, you know, but the opposite is still the same. If we sow bitterness, if we sow a seed of bitterness, guess what? Bitterness will grow. If we sow envy, guess what? It, envy will grow. You know, if we sow jealousy, jealousy will grow. So we have to be careful about this garden. And this is why wherever you sow, the Bible said, um, seed time and harvest. Whatever a man sows, so shall he reap. So if you keep sowing bitterness and backbiting and envy and strife, guess what? Guess what will come back into your life? Those things will be growing up in your garden. It'll be suffocating you because that's what you've sown. That's the seeds you've sown. Seed, time and harvest, no matter what. I'm, when I see a man full of envy, I said, hmm, he's sown some envy seeds. Because that's what he's that's what he's growing, but he, if you sow love, love that's that's the love will continue to manifest and be cultivated in your life. So thank you, Keith. I'm going to go to Junior next. Thank you, Junior. Man, the excitement is real this morning. I love it. I love it, uh, especially. Uh, you know, Mom, can I ask you to read that? Uh, that scripture, please. John 17. I really want people to actually soak this in before they uh, even attempt to pray for uh, everyone or anyone that they're praying for, because uh, it really drives home not just the vision of Christ and what God has intended uh, at the, you know, before the beginning of the world, what God intended for his masterpiece, which is <laughs> you and I. And it's just so fantastic. And I'm like, it, there was so much joy even yesterday when you were praying and you mentioned about you know John 17 I'm like yes someone actually listened and read it um so I'm sure that you have read it and uh you've come through with the fire of God and uh, the word just came through so I want you to read it again um just read that that John um, 17 so people could actually understand and I don't want you to rush it either I want you to take your time amen <laughs> amen whenever you're ready whenever okay thank you Thank you, Junior, because when you, I've read this chapter before, and um, I know that there's two, there's two prayers. We, want, we only concentrate on the Lord's Prayer. I mean, <laughs> Amen. that's the only one that we concentrate on, the Lord's Prayer. But this is Jesus's prayer. This, oh, is, it's amazing. this is what Jesus prayed. And um, I, 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 um, Jesus prayed specifically for what he wants to be manifested in the world. And what he wanted to be manifested in the church. And he prayed for the unbelievers. He prayed that for the oneness, the spirit and the unity. This is what Jesus was on his heart. And that's his heart for us. So I'm going to read it from St. John 17. And uh, I'm, I'm going to read it. And I, I've got the, a, a new international, what's, what, what version is this? This is called the New, new Living Translation. So it's a little bit... Um, easier to understand so I'm gonna read it from um, St. John chapter 17 and it starts after saying these things Jesus looked up to heaven and said father he's praying now he's praying to his father he's saying father the hour has come glorify your son so that he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority. This is what Jesus is saying to his father, Lord. You have given me that authority. So he said, for you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given to him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you. This is how we have eternal life. If we know him, we can have that eternal life. Verse three, 
And this, and this, um, verse three said, and this is the way to have eternal life is to know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave to me to do. So now, Father, bring me into the glory we have shared before the world began. I have revealed, I have revealed you to the ones you gave to me in this world. They were always yours. <laughs> you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. For I have passed on to them the message you gave to me. They have accepted it and know it that I came from you. And they believe now that you sent me. My prayer is not for my prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me because they belong to you. All who, all who are mine belong to you and you have given them to me so that they can bring my glory. Now I am departing from the world they are staying in the world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united, united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that not one was lost except the one headed for destruction as the scripture foretold. Now I am coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word. The world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe. Keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is true. Just as, just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Verse 20, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe. Hallelujah. Come on. Anybody that will ever believe in me through their, through their message. I pray that they will, that they will not be, sorry, I'll start again. I pray that they will all be one. Did you hear that? I pray, this is what Jesus is saying. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will be, will believe that you sent me. Verse 22. I have given them the glory you gave me. Did you hear that? He has given them, that's us, the glory you gave me so that Hallelujah. we may be as one as we are one. I am in them 
That's what Jesus is saying. He is in us and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity. Did you hear that word? Perfect unity. That the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as I love you. Father, I want these whom you have given to me to be with me. I To be with me. It says here, Father, I want these whom you have given to me to be with me where I am. He wants us to be where he is. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me before the world began. Verse 25 and final verse. Oh, righteous father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed, I have revealed you to them and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them <laughs> and I will be in them. Yeah. Jesus said, I Hallelujah. will be in them. That's he's talking about us. He will be yes. in us. Thank you, Jimmy. Yes. Thank, thank, thank you for reading that because um, I just want everyone, look, when you're doing your praying, and you're praying for others or you're praying for yourself listen i, I, I i'm just kind of like saying to you go to this scripture if you want encouragement go to this scripture if you want strength go to this scripture because god is saying to you that he's given you the power he's given you the the, the same glory that's been upon him uh even as like the, the just before the last scripture he's saying even bef when when we were in the beginning he said to his father as we were in the beginning before we created this before the time began the same glory that you've given me then so it shows that christ was there in the beginning and he's saying to you that same power that made you that he says let us let us him father son and holy spirit make man you into his image and likeness <laughs> the glory that which yet christ had at that time now be in us because Amen. he has come to give us life and free us from this torment and turmoil. But not only that, but to bring the unity of oneness. You cannot have God without having, loving your brothers and sisters. I must say this again. Like the disciples says, when they asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of all? He said to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, body, mind, and soul. You know of that commandment. But he said, yet the second is like unto the first. Which is, it's like, a con, it's like a joint up answer or joint up with the first. It's like to love your brothers and sisters as you would love yourself because you love God. <laughs> that means if you love your brothers and sisters as according to you loving yourself or how you treat yourself, how you deliver yourself, then trust me that the kingdom will come in your life. The divine divinity of purpose. It, it, listen, people without a purpose always create strife i think i heard my uh, i heard uh, 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 sister gray saying um you know the body has to work together in one it has to work together in one they cannot fight against each other because if the lungs don't have know its purpose it starts to fight <laughs> it, it, it once it doesn't know once it has a problem a complex it doesn't know it starts to confuse everything but here we are hallelujah <clears throat> this is why i pray so much and deeply uh, my passion is so that the church will just unite in hearts, spirit, body, mind, forget all of these uh, different names of church and that, but just to see the kingdom and understand the glory of God that it is for people to come together in the name, in the body of Christ as one. And that's where power is. Where do you think Pentecost come from? Sorry, I'm getting excited, but this is just me. You start me off this morning, sis, and it's just... It, it's one of them ones where we need to understand that when we come together, join in one for another. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what you did. I don't care what your life was like. But you believe. 
Christ prayed for the people who yet will believe later on, which is you and I, that we might also make disciples of us. That when we make disciples, it's not disciples unto us, but it's unto God. That they may also bring the truth and live in that truth. But not just bring the truth, but share the glory. Hallelujah. You are sharing the glory. You are sharing a thing that is dynamic that people of this world will never understand. Because they will never understand. Even some of us as Christians cannot seem to understand it. But yet we are striving on to perfection hallelujah we bless the lord we are still going on we are still battling forward but let's come to an understanding that is the father our god and it's the love for one another that the bible says when he said and explained to his disciple in that particular scripture he says on these two on these two hang all the law could you imagine all the law on these two things loving the lord and loving your brethren hang all the laws which means i think keith has said it if you only stop saying i'm looking for someone to love me all the time but give love hallelujah it shall return unto you good measure shaking up pouring out all together on you we always time just be selfish want everything for ourselves but yet still God is saying, pour out and watch me pour out in you. Because before you were, I poured out in you. That you will come this time, this age, this moment, this season, exactly where you're sitting or lying, wherever you are on this platform. He's saying, I want you to be in this mid right now to receive a revelation that will transform your whole life to let you see Sight beyond sight to see, not by the corner-minded way of things, to say, I want love. I need love. But to say, I need to show love. I need to turn the other cheek. I need to let them see Christ in me, that yet which was that he gave his life for me, that I may now receive life. That yet is not to transpire of this world from the nature of my mom and dad, but the nature to be born again, hallelujah, to be adopted into the family and the body of Christ, to see yet the kingdom of God in that day to receive in the glory of which he had set before the foundation of this world. Oh my God, I'm getting excited. It's like, I'm, listen, you start me off to pray. But listen, listen to me, listen to me very well, because obviously you know my man of prayer. I will pray after this, but listen to me very well. Like we, like uh, Sister Grace has said about the body, and I think Keith has mentioned about his body, and he talks about people loving each other, and like he's mentioned a key thing, stop looking for that kind of, oh, I need to get love, but actually give love and watch God let you receive love in your life because he will draw the people around you to love you, not the friends that you're looking for to love you, not the family that you're looking for to love you, but the people that will love you that is of God and of a good cause and of a good nature and of a good mindset that will help you in the purposes of your way. God will draw them in. Like the word says, you've just read it. He will draw them in. He will draw them into you. He will draw them on you, around you, to strengthen you, to build you like this platform. Hallelujah. We bless God. But as they would say, I, I think uh, uh, Sister Grace was pointing out, the body. What, what happened when the, the uh, uh, one part of the body uh, stopped working or shut down and you have to go to the doctors? God forbid you go into a coma or you, you, there's something worse near death experience. What happened? The doctors themselves will try to revive the body. <laughs> what, did, what, what, what will they do? Go and try to find where that problem is, sort that problem out so the whole body could function again. It Man. didn't say, look, let me just sort out the lungs and leave whatever other problem is there. When they go in and they see that there is a, oh God, I'm getting excited. When they see there's a problem there, they sort that one out and says, this one is urgent because I want it to function again. 
I mm-hmm. want life to come back to this body again. I want people to see that there is Christ again. Hallelujah. So when God says, let me fix the body, hallelujah, of Christ, let me fix the part that is weak. When you think that you're weak and you cannot go on any longer, God is saying, I'm going to fix you because I need you with me. Hallelujah. I need you with me. I need you to be a part of the body of Christ. I need you to be a part of the body of the people that will stand together and believe in Christ and share in the glory. Listen, the Bible says, Christ says, I did not come to condemn or judge this world. I came that the world may be saved, may have life. Hallelujah. You're waiting to be. uh, Listen, this morning you might be saying, Lord, I don't know how. I'm going to get through this mess or this test or whatever I'm going through. What can be done? But the Lord says, I am here not to condemn you, not of what you did, but I'm here to make you receive the glory that I've received. Mm -hmm. Just only have to change your mindset to see that yet it's about time that you lay down the, the, the robes of the world, the crowns of the world, and come and worship me and love one another. Mm -hmm. When God fixed one part of the body, hallelujah, he wants the whole body to start to breathe again, to function again, like one. Oh, bless be the name. Because when the Lord starts to fix things and it starts to work together, hallelujah, the praises start to come out. People start to unite. The, the, the power of God starts to flow down. This is where the true nature of power begins. Mm-hmm. You loving God. And loving one another. The Bible says when they were up in the, in, in the room together, in the upper room together, in one accord, hallelujah. The Bible says that there was like a rushing wind shaking the whole building. And it's like fire fall down upon them, hallelujah. Oh mm. my God. They were all in one accord, the Bible says. Mm. Do you want to see power? you want to experience the glory of God like he said that he prayed for you in John 17? Let's put it together this morning. Let us, listen, lift your voice for your brothers and your sisters. But believe unto God. For he said, even in that John 17, that is the truth that he has given. And they believe by the truth. And God, word is the truth. And also says that you will know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. How, ain't our God mighty and wonderful? Ain't he loving and kind and just? Amen. When the body works, when he fixed one part of the body, I think Heather was saying the other day, the bo- the chain is as weak as the weakest link, uh, uh, as as uh, strong as the weakest link. Come on now, all of us together. You don't know true prosperity. True prosperity is, is making sure that your. I think Keith mentioned this the other day. Is making sure that none of your brothers are, and sisters are left behind. Amen. That as you go up the mountain. I've mentioned this before. As you go up the mountain, it's like someone climbing Mount Everest. And if you know how they climb it, they have ropes on each other. That if one falls, the, the one at the top who is doing the leading, they will make sure that they're stable. So if one falls, th- th- that it will hang on. <laughs> the rope will catch. That's us this morning. We need to be linked together by the Holy Spirit of God Hallelujah. that he has sent upon us. Through the dying and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, through the word that He's given, that we have believed, Hallelujah! As he, as as our sister, as our um, Apostle Mom has read this morning about that, He not just pray for His disciples, but He pray for the one in the future who will believe. That is you and I who will believe this morning, this day, to receive of the glory. Hallelujah. I don't know what the glory means to you, but listen, if you're weak, he will make you strong. If you are down, he will lift you up like wings, like eagle. You will walk and you will not. Oh, glory to God. You will start to see things shift in your life because you no longer depend and wait on the world and to say, let me see what happened. But you know that you know that you know that God has already come through for you. This is the God who we serve. Not a God of, I'm waiting to see, but a God that I've already seen that God has given me because of my faith in my God that he's already gone ahead and prepared a way for me. Hallelujah. 
No longer I will receive sickness onto my body, but I will live like I am free from it. In Jesus' name. This is how we need to live. Mm -hmm. How we get free from these things. We bless God. And we glorify the mighty name. So let's start to urge. Let's start to look to unite the body. <laughs> let's start to look to unite the body. Listen, there's one thing. Don't worry, I'll pray after this and I'll be quiet. There's one thing that the Bible says, and I, I can't remember exactly where it is, but I know my, uh, script, my uh, uh, scripture guy, uh, Keith, will, uh, uh, will come up with him. I call him the scholar. <laughs> Bless be the name of the Lord. <laughs> the scholar will come up with the scripture for you. But it says, with, with this particular scripture, it says, uh, pray specifically when you pray. Pray specifically for the body of Christ. For the people of God. Why did it say that? It says pray for them even more. Why did it say that? You cannot go into a hospital. Right? You cannot bring people or patients who are sick into a hospital where there is only sick doctors. It doesn't work. The body needs to be whole. It needs to be one. It needs to be united. It needs to be healthy. Hallelujah. So that when people come in that is sick, that is that, that, that mm. Satan is crucifying mm. them. When they come in, they need to know that they could have freedom because they see freedom in you. They cannot mm. come in and see you depressed and they're depressed and they'll be like, well, blind leading blind. We might as well go in the hole together. No. Listen, pray for one another with the importance knowing that it serves a purpose of unity. It serves a purpose of power. Because it's the glory of God that is upon you. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, you got me excited this morning, Lord. And I just want to thank you. And I'm praying this morning. for I'm not even praying that people will be. I'm praying for the fire of God this morning. Father, I'm no longer praying for people to be filled with your spirit. But I'm praying for them to be filled with the fire of God. Illuminate your people this morning, mm -hmm. Lord. Oh, Illuminate hallelujah. them, Lord. Illuminate us, Lord. Illuminate them, Father. Illuminate. So that the fire of God, Lord, will burn through this world. And let the kingdom of darkness that rules over this world, like you've said, Father, in Second Corinthians, Father Lord. Two, Second Corinthians two. You said Satan is the ruler of this world. Father, I pray that the fire of God will be enlightened upon this world, that they may see these demonic foes will see. Father Lord, the people that hates us may see, because you said they hate you, so they will hate us. Father, we pray that they may see the light yes. that is emanating of the fire of God in our lives, the glory of God. I pray your glory for. Upon us, Thank Lord, you. we are here Thank waiting you. this morning for your glory to transpire, to transform, Father, to break through, to make whole, Father, to make sight beyond sight so we will understand where we're going through with clear purpose and no confusion. For you are not the God of confusion. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of sound mind. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, for your authority in the light and the power of the fire of God to flow and to transpire, to burn through, Father, to make this gold which was a tainted of mud and of dirt, Father, to be pure in your sight, that when they see it, it will beautify their eyes, that they may be drawn over, Father, to be transformed and to be delivered unto your kingdom that their lives may not be condemned, but they may be saved. Jesus they Jesus. may be saved through your people who is on this platform, who loves one another, who genuinely loves one another, who pray for one another, who seek for the best in one another, Hallelujah. who want to see your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth, Father, your glory here on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. oh, Father Lord, I pray that yet the glory that you said that it was upon you, even from the time that you were with your father before the time began. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that you have prayed that it will be upon us. You pray that in these last days in Joel, Father Lord, too. You said, Father Lord, you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh, Lord. You didn't discriminate. And I pray this morning that the fire of God, Father, may start to transpire upon all flesh. 
no matter what they've done for father you said lord jesus in your word in those pride that you have not come to condemn to judge but father lord however that the world may be saved through you i pray lord jesus that your power your glory may pour out to give us the strength, to give us the ability, to give us, Father God, the way out. Father, you said you make a way of escape for those who love you. Father, we pray, Lord, hallelujah, that, Father, we will see your glory. We will see your kingdom come. We will partake of your glory here on earth. Father, that when we get into heaven, there will be a crown laid up and a story ready to be told that yet our Father has shown himself to us. Father, we pray for that one, that, that upper room moment. We pray for that Pentecostal time where your fire, Father, will pour down upon us from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. That, Father, Lord, even in that scripture, you say on that day, Father, there were so much people that gave their lives, Father, in the thousands. To you, I pray, Holy Spirit, oh, Lord, that as you give us this fire, Father, for you this morning, that, Father, we will emanate that light that they may also be drawn to be saved that we may want to see the well-being of others we may want to see father the doing good of others we may want to love others like you have loved us lord jesus that we may be able to take that to the world and father we may have that encounter with you like the lady at the well that we may run forward in our conviction Oh, glory to God, that we may run forward in our conviction, Father, and seek no other thing but seek the kingdom and to bring it, Father, Lord, so people may see as we are here being the light of the, the salt of the earth. Father, enflavor us this morning. Enflavor us to every tongue that will come and taste that it may acquire a taste, Lord, of you, that the taste they may taste, Father, may draw them in and that they be craved for you that they may thirst no more and hunger no more because they have come and received the Holy One. Father, Lord Jesus, you have prayed for us. You have prayed for your disciples. You have prayed for yet, Father, who will come and disciples, Father, after them. Father, you have prayed that your word will be in us as you have been in your Father, that you are in us. Father, I thank you for that anointing, that unity, that bond, that Holy Spirit. Father, I pray now for the fire upon the churches of this nation and the nation worldwide. In China, Lord, in, in Nigeria, Father, Lord, in Ghana, Father, right now in Jamaica. Father, we pray for India. Father, we pray for Japan. All the, the, across the world, Father, in Iraq, the Iraqi and Christians. Father, Lord, we pray for the, 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 the Emirate States, for the Arabic nation who serves you and trusts you. Father, I pray for their release. Yes, Lord. For as their life has been mortared, Father, Lord, Lord Jesus, for you. As their life has been given up. <laughs> you said, Lord Jesus, in the time to come when the trumpet has been blown, as it's been described in Revelation, that all the dead in Christ shall arise. All the one that has been martyred, hallelujah, for Jesus, shall arise. So, Father, I thank you for their lives, for what they have sticked out for. They never give up. Father, they never uh, kneel down and bow down and give you up. Father, I thank you that they haven't renounced you. So today, Father, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess the people who you have chosen, Father, to believe. The people who you have prayed for in John 17 on this platform to believe in the name of Jesus will not yet bow to the enemy of this world. But stand in power and admiration, Father, and to stand in unity, Father Lord, and stand in your glory, Father, and in the anointing which you have given upon your people for this time to come. I pray, Lord, that that fire will rain down from heaven upon your people to stand the trials of this time which is in these end days lord that your people will not quiver but they will stand father in the fear of you and know you for themselves and who you are to them that purpose will be of the kingdom that yes. they will not be shaken in their foundation but they will stand in the truth and the light of god and they will worship in spirit and in truth uh, no matter where they are for what no matter where they're from in the name of jesus uh, that father the power will be enlightened over your people that they may stand father lord in you and not be shaken in jesus mighty name that their father the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church that is built upon the rock father remember your people this morning who are weak Remember your people who are suffering, Lord. Jesus. Remember the people. We pray for them this morning. All the nations who love you. For you love those who love you. Father, we know that you come. You said, Father, Lord, you pray not for the world, 
but you pray for the ones you, <laughs> whom you, God has given you, Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father Lord, that everyone who has believed in you, Father Lord, yes, empower Lord. them right now. Yes. Enlighten them right now. Yes. Deliver them right now. Heal them. Heal them right now. Set them free right now. Give them strength right now to press through their trials. That their mess will become a message. Lord, heal them right now. Give them the strength, the courage, the boldness. To go through, Father, their testing and trial. And to come through the other end. Like the free Hebrew boys. Still being protected by you. Not even a smell of smoke that is around them. And upon them. Father, they've not been tainted by what they're going through. But in the name of Jesus, they have overcome the dragon. They have overcome the dragon by the blood of the Lamb. And by their testimony. So, Father, I thank you for courage right now. And I pray, Father God, as I leave this, and I say amen, Father, but I pray that it will continue, Father, through the rest of our lives, that the power of God, Father, may show itself upon us, physically, physically upon us, in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Father, let your kingdom come, let your will be done, let your glory shine upon your people, and as we remain in the house of the Lord forever. Keep us in one accord in one together and baptize us in your Holy Spirit and the power of the fire of the Spirit of God so that, Father, we may overcome this world and stand together to see our time of judgment when we shall come home to you in your glory, in your stead, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Bless be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless you. God, Hallelujah. We God. give you praise in oh, Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Glory to God. What a prayer that covered us. It covered the nations of this world. You know, we need to continue to pray for the nations, the nations of the world. Some, some Christians in other parts of the world are being persecuted. And uh, we need to pray for our uh, persecuted brothers and sisters those are uh, maybe in, in in war at this time they're fearing for you know just the safety to, to 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 walk on the streets and and we just need to continue to lift up our brothers and sisters our one another it's such there's such power in this and junior knocked it on the head when he said that jesus said there's two out of the ten commandments there's two that covers everything love the lord thy god with all thy heart thy mind your soul and the second one is to love your neighbor as how you love yourself you know you know the funny thing is sister grace quick one before you you know you mentioned that about the two that uh, if you uphold those two covers all the law it's not just the ten commandments because if you realize the israelites their law they have about it's probably more than this but 606 uh, 16 or 15 laws that they have to follow. This is why it was so hard for anyone to be converted to, uh, to, uh, to be a Jew because it was so much laws. So when he said it covers all the law, it covers literally everything that they had to be obedient to. Amen. You know, Jesus came and he just made it simple because it was, it, as Junior said, it was, it was so, um, so many laws that, you know, they just couldn't, they couldn't keep all of them. But if you can keep these two, Jesus said, this, these two hang all of the others. And that is to love him first with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, everything. And then love your, your neighbor as your brother, your sister. Doesn't matter if they're not even saved. Love other people the way, treat other people Amen. the way you, you want to be treated. Would you like people to be stabbing you in the back? No, you wouldn't. So why would you do that? Treat other people the way how you would like them to be treated, how you would like to be treated. That's why it says, as you would love them as how you would love yourself. You wouldn't wish harm on yourself, would you? So why are we wishing harm on our brother or our sister? We want to wish good upon ourselves and we should wish good upon our, our brothers. It's a, it's a, it's a principle. It's a principle. Love the Lord 
your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul. That means with everything that is within you. Love him and love our one another. So we're going to continue to um, pray for one another. We know who we've been assigned to pray for. We're, gonna, we're not just going to pray for a few days. We're going to continue even after this week because I just think it's something that we need to continue in. So I'm going to ask um, Beverly to um, go next because she's got her hands up. Thank you, Beverly. Hi. Uh, I, I did have my hand up, but then I felt that Shanique should um, speak before me. Shanique, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, go Thank ahead. You. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to jump in on what Junior was saying before you pray so you could involve it in, but um you guys are mentioning about love and stuff and and um it was mentioned that you have to you know like when keith was saying before you seek love you know give love and then you will get it back and i guess junior echoed the same thing and stuff and you speak about the old the main two of the commandments are the main two things that, the two, main two laws to keep is loving god and loving yourself and loving your neighbors as yourself and um what came to me was that if you don't know what love is, or true love is, you cannot give it. And um, sometimes in the physical world, we attract what we understand love to be. And I think that is why we have so much issues now, like with the whole mental health and all these stuff, because we are not understanding the main ingredients of love, because we don't know what it really means, the real understanding of it or meaning of it. We are unable to, 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 to let it soak through our body and stuff so I'm looking for someone to love me the love can come that genuine love of God can come to me and I reject it because my the definition of love to me is to give me stuff let's be for example the definition of love to me is to do it's just like materialistic stuff but yet still there is no respect there is no caring there you, you're constantly hurting me but for me because you're giving me things that's love and then that in itself is also causing me that hurt and that pain even I'm getting that material thing is causing me to be bitter, to be angry. And with all those other ingredients, I'm unable to love the next person because I'm becoming bitter towards everybody. I'm, I'm, and again, the ones that show me the real love, I'm, I'm so angry. So I'm unable to love my neighbor because I, do I really love myself? Because I don't have that main ingredients of love. I think it's love because that's the understanding I have of it. But the, when we get into that place of understanding the love of God, you will be able to even love your enemy. I don't know if I'm getting to someone or if you're getting what I'm saying. Back to Shanique. When I understand what love is from God and how it is to love me, to see the love that God has for me and love me the way that God loved me and understand God's love, I was able to love the people who hurt me. I'm not going to be your friends anymore. But I'm free. If I'm able to help you, I can help you because it's of that love of God. Because it's painful, it's hard to love somebody who is treating you bad, who will betray you. But because you love you and you know the love of God tell you to love, to respect, to care, to cherish, to, to nurture, you, you, you automatically reflect that love back because it's the love of God that you've, you've, you've soaked in, you've, 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 you've now understand. So... Again, when they said cover the old law, it is so true because if whatever else implication, whatever else rules that you have to follow in order to get into the kingdom, if you follow that first one, it makes everything else easy. I don't know if I'm if you're understanding. If yeah. you're meant to not hurt people, you're not meant to not be biters, you're not meant to be gossipers. If you first love yourself and be able to reflect that love unto others, you won't be able to do it. As you just said, Sister Pastor Grace. If you don't want someone to bite you, you won't bite people. You know, if you don't want someone to hurt you, you won't hurt people. And that's love. And if we understand love from that concept, sometimes the relationship that we go into, whether um, um, to find a husband, to find a wife, we will attract different stuff. We will not accept certain things. And again, let's go back. If we understand this love, then we will save ourselves from so much stress and problem from these divorces from these bitten, like, and then these stuff bring bitterness because you're hurt. You're hurt because of what the person does to you and all these stuff, you know? 
because they don't them themselves don't understand the love of God. So when the Bible said you should not marry an even yoke, a person that don't doesn't know God, it's also again important because if you understand the love of God, not just being I'm a Christian, I'm baptized, but understand the love of God, he will be able to love you effectively. And you'll be able to love that person effectively. So comes what may, the struggle, the stress, the, 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 the bad times, you are able to still stand in your marriage and rise because you both understand that love of God. Um, again, I don't know if nobody's understanding what I'm saying, but under, grasp the love of God. Don't take love as, oh, you know, love is just loving somebody or I need someone to love me. You have to love you first. Then when that love come, you will be able to appreciate the true love and not just the love that you think you know, because as again, we're all from different background, we have different upbringing. So, you know, you get shown love that, oh, I'm a mother, so I should cook for you, clean for you. That's the love that they know to give you. So you think it's the same thing, but what about the other part? How can I love you, but I'm, I'm, I'm hurting you to the point where you want to kill yourself. How can I love you? But I'm, I'm, I'm making you so bitter. You don't even want to see other people where you're so angry with people. If somebody say hi, the, 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 re the reaction that you give is so infected. But loving yourself the way God loves you and understanding God's love. Be patient, be kind, be respectful, caring. You cannot love me if you don't care for me. Because before you love me, once you see me on the road, the first thing you see is just me. You don't know me. So you have to have that care and love in you to automatically care for me that you don't know. So you cannot love me if you don't know me or if you don't know what love is because you can get starting to get to know me and I'm this person that may be negative, maybe bring wind you up the wrong way, maybe annoying. Can you still love me in that annoying way? I, because again, it's going to take patience to try to help me to to see the error in my way. So it takes patience for you to effect to say, you know what, I love you unconditionally, despite your annoyance. Because yeah. again, you have to see that sense of change. So what I'm trying to say is, the, it is important to understand that love is the main factor in having every other, applying every other law. Because mm -hmm. if I am angry, I'm gonna be bitter because everybody's hurting me, everybody's betraying me, and I'm unable to love the next person. So understanding God's love, not the world's love, because listen, you see how the world is. You get married today, you get divorced tomorrow. I love you, but then I'm going to plan to kill you to get your insurance money. That, where is the love? <laughs> so understanding God's love, not the world's love, but God's love. And then the other laws, as, as Junior and Pastor Grace just mentioned, will basically fall in place. It's not that it's not important, but if you have that love, every other law, even if it's a million law, it would automatically be easy for you to, to, to practice it because you have that main thing because love is, love is the multitude of everything. And again, look at God, because he loves us despite what we are doing now on earth. It's, he's still being merciful mm -hmm. with that love. If we have that love, every other thing can be ignored-ish, but it, you won't react in that negative aspect because of love. So again, love is important. And let us just um, learn to love us from God's love. Not just love us because I'm so sexy. I'm so handsome. Love you. Genuinely love you from God. And then you're able to give that love back to somebody else. Understand God's love. And you're able to love you better. And when you're loving you better, you're able to love other people better. And then when the true love comes your way, you'll be able to embrace it and receive it and not reject it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Shanique. Thank you. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. You know, our concept of love can be twisted. It can be, um, we could, we could um, have a mindset that love is just like, you know, just receiving gifts, as she said. If, that, if that's, your, you know, some people, I always say to like parents, I said, you know, a child, you know, would rather you take them out and give, give them a good time, a day out, then to give them a gift. Because I, when they, you, you give them a gift, they'll open it, play with it for five minutes. And then, you know, the, the novelty is worn off. But what you deposit into that child, the love that you show, the excitement, and the, the time that you spend with that child, that child will remember that for eternity. It will remember forever. 
when he grows up, he can say, oh, I remember my father used to take me to football matches. I remember when my mum used to take me to, to uh, on holidays. They remember those things because those things was when you were showing love to them. But rather you buy them the next PlayStation and the next trainers. Yeah, they get the next trainers and then they want the next trainers and then they want the next trainers because the last trainers wasn't, wasn't enough. But when you show love, this is where you deposit something that is eternal into their life. So we're talking about the agape love, which is the love of God. That's the love that God has, the unconditional love. That's the love that he wants us to have. That Not because that person said something about you, you know, you're going to hold it against them. What would Jesus do? Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's what Jesus said, even on his death, or even on the last breath, he's still saying, forgive them. That's telling us something. Even if it's our last breath, we say, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them, because we just, just want to release them and be and just don't let it harbor us. Don't let it harbor into our heart. So yeah, love is important. So I'm going to go to the next person, which is Beverly. Can you unmute now, Beth, please? It's you, Beth. Okay. Yeah, hi. Uh, there's two things. Um, when Shanique spoke, I think one of the things that helped me in my life is when I was looking for love, and then you you find that love that is uh, um, it looks pretty on the outside, but when you scratch beneath it. It's it's um it's not real gold. But all I can say is that um if you get the revelation of your heavenly father and how much he loves you, that sets a precedence to the love that you're you're seeking. Because I know that I I had to sit in God's love. Because when I was looking for love around me, I wasn't receiving it. But the more I looked to God and Jesus and got the revelation of Jesus dying on the cross and he did it for me, personally for me. And, it, you know, his hands are so big and his heart is so big that that personalized love is for everybody. It's not. It's not that um, you do for me and then I, I will do for you, but he loves us unconditionally. Even when we fail, uh, we fail bad, he's still there and he's still loving on us. And, you know, I just felt that um, Shanique should actually pray into that area, if you don't mind, because that, I could hear the passion in her and I just felt that she go before me. So um, is that okay, Grace? Pop yes, of Grace. course. Yeah, Shanique, is that okay with you, Shanique? If you could um, pray that we have the, the sincere love, the love of Christ. Oh, yes, please do. <laughs> please do. Um, please do. Because it's what's lacking in this world right now. And so there's so much things going on. And, and so we are unable to have that true loving relationship like marriage and stuff because we don't really understand that love of God. So we take whatever comes that look pretty from our understanding and we get hurt. And that's what the devil wants. He wants us to be hurt and bitter so he can basically consume us, you know? He can consume us. And then once he consumes me with that bitterness, you keep, they said hurt people, hurt people. So that's just what I want to say. If you're hurt, you're going to keep hurting people. So where is the love you're showing of God? We're going to be hypocrites serving God, right? Saying, oh, God is love, and God is love. But then we're showing people hate, wishing bad for them and stuff like that. So yeah, go ahead and pray. No, no. And the, uh, the other thing that um, when Junior was speaking and uh, um, Pastor Grace is that um, the enemy loves to divide. You know, like there's a black church, there's a white church. There's, a, I mean, okay, there's churches like Hispanic and, and Indian because, you know, we don't speak those languages, so they need to come together 
as a family. But, you know, there shouldn't be a white church. There shouldn't be a black church. There shouldn't be divisions. As um, Pastor Grace was saying, it, we are a part of the family and we can't do without the other. It says so in the words that we cannot do without the other. So the enemy does put division in and we have to remember that it is the enemy. But I know our flesh rises up and in indignation saying, you know, cussing each other out. You know, that's not how we should be. We need to actually come together because there is power. What, like Grace, um, Pastor Grace said, there's power when we come together because we can't do without the other. One limb might be weaker than the other. And it says in the word that you need to pray for them. You know, even if they haven't got the revelation to where we are now, we still have to pray for them because they still have a purpose and their purpose might be to, to, to look after the elderly, to look after the youth, but they're still not moving in their authority and who they are. So they are a weaker part of the family, but they are still a part of the family. And we still have to love them. It's not whether one is better than the other. We still are underneath the same umbrella and the name is Jesus. And that is what unites us. But the enemy will always come to bring division. But, you know, each one of us, you know, we have to, you know, you we think of what happened in, in history and what, what they did to black people and they still yes. carry We on. have to actually put that down and just look to God and know that God has is going to move in it because it can't stay the same. It can't stay the same because if we if we keep on looking at the history, because I know that every time I, I look at history, I just get mad. But I have to remember it is the enemy, it's the seed of the enemy. And when and we have to take our eyes off of the enemy and we have to know who we belong to and the authority that we do have in the name of Jesus. So that's all I have to, have to say. But, Bev, Bev, did you want to pray? Um, because Shanique is not on the platform at the moment. Did you want to just lead us in that, that prayer? Okay. All right. Oh Lord Jesus. You are such a good father. Lord God, there is none like you. Lord God, I pray right now for everyone on this platform and anyone that's going to hear this prayer, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray that people will get a revelation of your love and not man's love, Lord Jesus. Because when we sit in your love, Lord Jesus, we can love, Lord Jesus, in that broken area in our life. We can love because you first loved us, Lord Jesus. So remind us, Lord Jesus, to look to you. Look in the word because the word exudes love, Lord Jesus. It overflows, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you right now that everybody on this platform, Lord Jesus, will know your love and sit in your love. And, Lord, if they don't have that love, Lord, I pray that there'll be a desire to put their face into your word, the Bible, Lord Jesus. In the Bible, there is plenty of food for us, Lord Jesus. Lord, there's baby food, there's grown-up food, there's, there's love food, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that people will actually start to pick up the Bible and know your love, even in their brokenness. And, Lord, that's where you will heal, because mm -hmm. that's how you did it with me. Everyone's totally different. But, Lord, I, you are the center of it all, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just give you all the honor and praise your name. And, Lord, also, 
where people have looked for, you know, for the injustice in years gone past and the injustice that goes on right now, Lord Jesus. Every day, Lord Jesus, there is injustice to people of colour, Lord Jesus, and anyone that looks different, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, I pray. I pray, Lord Jesus, that people will stop, Lord Jesus, and look to you, Lord Jesus, because you're the anchor, Lord Jesus, where the enemy has just been in it, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that people will look up and not look down. They will look to you, Lord Jesus, because, Lord, you are their father and justice will be done whether it's now or later, but justice will be done. Lord, I just give you all the honour and praise your holy name. And anyone here, Lord Jesus, on the platform that finds it really hard, Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, whoever you are, Lord, that you will just give them a passion for that, that person, Lord Jesus, that they found irritating Lord Jesus and Lord the colour thing Lord Jesus I pray Lord Jesus that you will give them a love for the next nation the next um yeah whoever and wherever they come from let us start to pray for you know those people and have a love for them in Jesus name amen Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love you, Lord. I worship and I praise your name. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for this topic. I thank you, God, for this vital topic. Lord, without love, we are nothing. Hallelujah. Without love, we can be nothing. Lord, the world is failing because of lack of love. Lord, we speak of love, but God, do we understand love? How can we love our brothers? How can we love our sisters, but God, we kill them? Hallelujah. Lord, I pray, my God, that the people that should know, the people that should be teaching the truth and the light, that they will see the light and speak it, my God. Lord, the mothers are hurting their children. The fathers are hurting their children. The children are hurting their mothers and fathers, God, because, God, the lack of love and understanding, Jesus. Lord, help us to get away from this pain and hurt. The brokenness of marriage, the broken marriages, my God, the broken family, because, my God, of bitterness. Because of unresolved problem, God, which comes from, my God, lack of love. How can we as mothers and fathers allow the enemy to consume us to hurt our children? Because, God, we have not that unconditional love that you gave unto us. Jesus. Oh, God, touch our heart, my God. Transform it, my God. Flush it out, my God. Squeeze out the bad blood right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, too much hurt, my God. Too much pain. Too much murder, God, because of lack of love, bitterness, anger, jealousy. Oh, God, my God. Heal us, Jesus. Heal us, my God, from the brokenness, from the hatred, my God. Uproot it, my God. Uproot it, Jesus. Because the root, my God, the tree flow from the root. And God, if the mango is the root is dirty, the root is corrupt, my God, we will not get a sweet fruit. So Lord, help us, God, to break that curse, break that barrier, break that bondage, break that chain that is allowing us as single mother, as parents, as a joint parents to make our children bitter. And now, God, we're living in the life where the kids are killing each other for no apparent reason, God. If you should ask them, they don't know why they do what they do. Lord, I pray right now, my God, that you start from me. Any unforgiveness, any bitterness, any hurt, God, cleanse it. Lord, I pray for everyone on this platform, my God, whatever they've been through, going through, my God, whoever I've hurt them, my God, 
I betray them, Jesus. Help them to release it, my God. Help them to embrace your love, understand your love, and seek your love. Help us to love us, my God. Help us to love ourselves the way you love us. So we're able, my God, to love the people around us unconditionally, Jesus. Lord, I pray, my God, for your forgiveness. Forgive us, God, for not grasping your love. Forgive us, my God, for rejecting the love that you've given unto us, my God. We speak that you love us and we love you, but God, we hurt ourselves. God, we, 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 we destroy ourselves, my God. How do you feel? Because we're not embracing the love that you give unto us, Jesus. Jesus. Forgive us, my God, for not seeing the love that you've given unto us. God, we accept every nurturance, every bitterness, every ill treatment because we don't understand your love for us. Forgive us, Jesus. Forgive us, God, for accepting men that abuses us because we don't understand your love for us, Jesus. Forgive us, my God. Hallelujah. Heal us, Jesus, from the brokenness. Heal us, my God. We're able to embrace your love. Lord, whatever we've learned, help us to unlearn the bad things, my God. Help us, my God, to forget it, my God, like you forgive given and forgotten our sins, my God. Help us to forgive ourselves. Yes. So we're able to love ourselves the way you love us. And then we're able to love others, and love our neighbors, love our enemies, my God, as you ask us to do, Jesus. Oh, God, my God, my heart is hurting because, God, we are dying because of lack of love, Jesus. Our children are dying because of lack of love, my God. Jesus. Help us to help our children, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, help us to help our children, my God. Mercy upon us, Jesus. You said you've given us that, my God, to grow them in the right way. But God, we failed because we didn't know love. We were abused. We were affected, my God. So we grow them in material way. We grow them, my God, to be jealous and to be greedy, Jesus. Forgive us, my God. Oh, God, my God, I need your mercy upon us, Jesus. Have mercy, my God. Help us, my God, to see the truth. It's never too late, my God, to turn things around. Jesus. So have mercy upon us, Jesus. Have mercy upon us, God. Forgive us, Jesus. Okay. Open our hearts and mind to understand your love. Not only understand it, but grasp it, embrace it, Jesus. Feed on it, my God. Let it, my God, pour in us, my God, and flush out the dirt, the bitterness, the anger, the hatred, my God, and the lack of self-love that we have for ourselves, Jesus. And then, God, we're able, my God, to pour out sweet fruit, sweet words, sweet love unto others, Jesus. Hurt people, hurt people. So help our hurt right now, my God. Heal our heart, heal our brokenness, my God. Heal our soul, Jesus. Lord, your grace is sufficient, my God. Help us to embrace your grace, Jesus. Help us to embrace your grace and your mercy according to us, my God, upon us, my God. Oh, God, we thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God. I thank you, Jesus. Have mercy, my God. I pray, my God, for a flourishing marriage. I pray, my God, for flourishing lives, my God, on this platform right now, Jesus. Let, my God, we renew our mind and our heart and our ways, my God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Heal us, my God. But heal our mind first, God. Then our mind and our heart will be able, my God, to function accordingly. And then, my God, our body can work the way it should work because we get rid of the bitterness and the hatred and the anger. My God, we can flush out all diseases in our body if we get rid of the bitterness and the anger. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Heal us, my Hallelujah. God. Heal us, Jesus. Heal us, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Before I just, just been touched by the prayer of our sister, uh, Shanique, um, and that scripture verse came to mind. It's First Peter 4, sorry, First John 4. First John 4, and it's in verse 11 to 13. It says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. 
no man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby we know that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. Amen. I just wanted to read that. Father, I thank you and bless you for this morning. And that word, you, God, love, who is love, rings so heavily in my spirit this morning. And all that's been said and done this morning, all the prayers that's gone up this morning. And Lord, I know it's about your love. We don't have love, we don't have nothing. If we to look at 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 1, we see and we hear what Paul the Apostle said concerning your love. And just Father, it's key in our lives as believers. And this morning, Lord, help us by your spirit to demonstrate your love. And so, Father, thank you and I bless you this morning for all my brothers and sisters on this platform and beyond for your love. And Lord, help me and help us because it's by your spirit that we can only show your love. Nothing, no other way, but by your spirit. And in order for us to do so, we need to walk in the spirit. We cannot live in the flesh. We cannot live in the carnal and it's all by the Spirit. And so, Father, I thank you and bless you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.